Welcome to week four of the module Learning Through Two Languages, Fostering Additive Bilingualism, Cross-Linguistic Transfer. This week's module addresses the question, how do bilingual learners transfer the knowledge they have gained through one language to express themselves in another language? Since we believe that all knowledge is held within a conceptual reservoir, what happens when a bilingual learner wants to use or express the knowledge within the reservoir in a different language? A fundamental understanding you should build this week is awareness that what you know in one language, you can learn to express or say in any other language. In other words, knowledge is not confined to the language in which it was acquired. This is because all languages serve the same communicative purposes. For instance, in every language, people can talk about the present, past, and future, can describe objects, and can express emotion. The list of what languages do is endless, and all languages do the same things. So, any knowledge in the conceptual reservoir can be expressed through all human languages, even though talking about a concept in each language may require different vocabulary and grammar structures. This is extremely important for young bilinguals to understand because they are constantly surrounded by English in school and English is the language valued at school. Young bilinguals often reject their first language in order to fit in. The message that their learning is enhanced when they use both languages should be reinforced regularly. When individuals are learning a second language, they naturally look for similarities and differences between their first and second languages. Sometimes this is beneficial, such as when words are similar. For example, active, activo, activo, and actif. At other times, this causes errors, such as mispronunciation of words. For example, the sometimes silent H in our or honest. Using knowledge about one language to try to function in a second language is called language transfer. When students know how to listen, speak, read, and write in one language, they are better able to transfer the knowledge about how language works to a second language. Knowledge of one's language's conventions may occasionally cause confusion or errors, such as when a French native speaker says the house blue instead of the blue house when speaking English. Instead of hearing the house blue as a lack of comprehension, teachers can know that the expression is simply a part of the language development process. The bilingual learner has used knowledge of his or her first language to make an assumption about where to place an adjective in English. Becoming aware of how languages are similar and different allows learners to build on what they already know. The more similar languages are to each other, the more positive transfer there will be. The more dissimilar two languages are, the less the learner will be able to rely on one language to make sense of or grow in the other. Bilingual learners can benefit from direct instruction in challenge areas, but the most important thing teachers can do is to emphasize to bilingual learners that they can take what they know in one language and use it to strengthen the other, and that this is a gift. Bilingual learners know a lot, even if it is not yet encoded in English. The more students know, that is, the deeper their conceptual reservoir, the more they have to transfer to any language they learn. For instance, students know many conceptual elements that they can learn to talk about in a new language. Conceptual elements may be basic facts, procedures, relationships among ideas, and the reasons things happen. The concepts remain the same even when the language is different. Teachers can encourage students to use what they know to demonstrate what they are learning. One way to build conceptual transfer is to allow students to create bilingual products around content subjects. This story in English and Urdu was created by three girls. In composing the story, the three girls discussed their ideas primarily in Urdu, but wrote the initial draft in English. By building on the students' varying levels of proficiency, Maria was able to participate in a grade 7 social studies unit, even though she had a minimal knowledge of English. 
There are both cognitive and affective benefits to intentionally building on cross-linguistic transfer. This is how one of the girls described her feelings about her first language in the writing project. The more bilingual learners see their language skills as an asset, the more likely they will persist in the face of the challenge of second language learning. Students' identities and immigration stories are a good place to start with cross-linguistic transfer projects. But these kinds of bilingual collaborations among students and their families can be done in every subject area. Conceptual transfer can be facilitated by the use of cognates a common strategy that bilinguals use to make sense of what they are learning. Cognates are words that are similar in both languages and mean the same thing. Dentist and dentista in the visual as an example as are telephone, park, and bus. There are also false cognates, words that sound similar but mean very different things. While embarazada in Spanish may look and sound like embarrassed, it actually means pregnant, which might certainly embarrass you if you used it incorrectly. Teachers should encourage students to look for cognates. Students can also use what we term metacognitive and metalinguistic strategies to think about, organize, and make use of information. These strategies include, but are not limited to, visualizing, using graphic organizers, mnemonic devices, and vocabulary acquisition strategies. As an example, a student who has experience with Venn diagrams for comparing and contrasting two things can transfer knowledge of that organizational strategy into comparing and contrasting in the second language. The strategy itself is transferable across languages. Language is more complex than words alone. Pragmatics refers to the rules for social language, which includes using language to accomplish different purposes adjusting for different audiences, and following the rules for conversation, such as knowing how to repair language misunderstandings or how to use verbal and nonverbal signals. Bilingual students will be familiar with using language for purposes, such as asking questions or telling stories, but differences in sentence structures among languages, such as how questions are formed, may hinder communication. We also change how we talk, depending on the level of formality and the relationship to the speaker, which is an important aspect of pragmatics. Teachers often use gestures to help convey ideas, particularly with students in early stages of language acquisition. Remember, though, that the use of gestures to communicate is actually culturally based. A common gesture in one culture may be highly offensive in another. So, bilingual students can benefit from explicit instruction in school about acceptable and unacceptable gestures. When languages share similarities, cross-language transfer includes specific linguistic elements such as the meaning of root words, like photo in photosynthesis, and features of grammar and punctuation. Different languages use prefixes and suffixes in ways that are similar to and different from English. For instance, all languages have ways of indicating quantity and more than one. In English, while there are exceptions, most nouns are pluralized by adding s or es. This may be similar to or different from how other languages indicate plurals. What easily transfers is the knowledge that each language has a way of showing more than one. What may be more difficult to transfer are the specific rules. Sounds are a basic unit in all languages, but not all languages have the same sounds. When sounds are the same in both the first and second languages, bilingual students will have an easy time reproducing them. However, most languages have unique sounds that non-native speakers may not be able to hear or differentiate. When students' first languages do not include some of the sounds that are part of English, they will not be accustomed at first to hearing these sounds. They may have difficulty distinguishing between sounds, pronouncing new sounds, or isolating or blending sounds. Being aware of similarities and differences in the first and second languages helps teachers determine where to focus attention. 
For instance, when a sound does not exist in a particular language, speakers will substitute the best approximation in their language for an unfamiliar phoneme in another. For example, sh is a sound in English but not Spanish. The closest sound to sh is ch. That is why shoes may sound like choose or shoulder may sound like shoulder. This process of sound substitution is the basis of what we often call foreign accents. That is, the transfer of the sound system of one language onto another. It is important to talk to students about the fact that the human mouth can produce and the human ear can perceive many different sounds, but that each language only uses some of them. Pronunciation, quote, errors do not indicate a lack of understanding or knowledge. It is helpful to explicitly teach students how to transfer what they know in their home language into English. Start with phonemes that exist in both languages. For example, M and S are similar sounds in English and Finnish. Move to explicit instruction in phonemes that do not exist in the native language. For example, in Finnish, TH or TH and SH do not exist. Bilingual learners will likely need to hear and practice sounds that are new to them. The older the student, the more challenging learning and pronouncing new sounds can be. While practice on pronunciation is helpful, the main focus of instruction should always be on meaning and deepening understandings of the concepts of the curriculum. This example from the program Words Their Way with English Learners shows how you can combine conceptual and phonemic awareness transfer to maximize learning. Students and their families can be involved in creating similar supports regardless of the language. These supports are very effective in scaffolding students' ability to consciously take away what they know in one language to make sense of the other. How could you use what you know about sound and symbol relationships of English to make sense of a different orthography? You already know that in an alphabetic language, symbols represent sounds. Think of the sounds the letters K and S represent in English. Hebrew is also an alphabetic language. In fact, the word alphabet comes from the first two letters in Hebrew, which are alf and bet. The symbols you see on the screen each represent sounds, though in a slightly different way than English. What you perceive as a backward C with a dot in the center makes the same sound as K in English. The letter you perceive to be a circle represents the sound S. The three dots in the shape of a triangle represent the sound eh. Given this knowledge, you could begin to decode the word for money on the poster, which is pronounced kesa. Hebrew reads from right to left, and while this is different from English, you can use your knowledge of directionality to decode the Hebrew on the page. Importantly, you do not need to know the name of the letter to work on the sound symbol correspondence. In other words, drill on the names of the letters is not the best place to begin literacy instruction through a second language. Why is it important for you to understand transfer? Your bilingual students will benefit if you organize your instruction to help them take what they know in one language to strengthen the other. This means using what they know in their primary language and using it to learn English and taking what they learn in English to explore in more depth with their families in the home language. Every student in your classroom can enjoy the benefits and joys of multilingualism. In terms of cross-linguistic transfer, the important message is that all languages do what every language can do, and students can think about how to use what they already know and can do to make sense of and build skills in another language. Before you move to the Make It Work activities, take time to reflect on the guiding question for this week. How do bilingual learners transfer the knowledge they have gained through one language to express themselves in another language? How might you apply the ideas discussed in this Explore to increase students' awareness of their bilingualism and their roles as active participants in their own language and conceptual development? Respond to these ideas in the discussion area.